Hey everyone, Harrison Reed here, and today I want to talk to you about publishing in one of the premier journals of the PA profession, JAPA. JAPA is the Journal of the American Academy of PAs, and it's on the radar of a lot of authors who are either PAs themselves or work with the PA profession. It's an excellent journal for anyone of any skill level looking to publish, but it's not a sure thing when it comes to publication. In fact, JAPA has similar rejection rates as some of the top journals in the healthcare fields. So this video is going to break down some simple steps to help you achieve publication in JAPA and avoid some of those automatic rejections. But first, why do you even want to publish in JAPA in the first place? Well, there's several reasons that I want to outline for you. First, JAPA is one of the most broadly read journals in the PA profession. It's not specific to any one specialty, so that means that all PAs are willing and able to read this journal. Now, if you're trying to reach a broad PA audience with a general medicine topic, JAPA is perfect, but it's also great if you're looking to engage the PA profession in workforce or policy work or research, or looking to talk about social issues that pertain to the PA profession. Any PA in any specialty is likely to read JAPA, and so it's a great way to reach a broad and diverse audience of PAs. The next thing you need to know about JAPA is that it's an indexed journal. Now that means that JAPA is deemed important enough to be indexed in major databases like PubMed Central and Medline. That's really important for authors who are looking to build an academic career and need some really reputable publications on their CV. An index journal is not just a sign of quality, but it's also a functional tool that will allow your work to reach more people. Similarly, JAPA also has a relatively high impact factor for a niche journal. An impact factor is a way of measuring how often a journal's work is cited by other authors in other journals. That's really important when you're thinking about things like the impact your work might have. If other authors are citing your work, that means they deem it important and they're working in similar fields that are going to be piggybacking off of your work. This helps to advance the entire greater body of academic literature, raises your prominence as an author, and contributes to the overall healthcare fields. It takes years to cultivate an impact factor, so having one and having a relatively high one is a measure of a journal's quality and persistence in the academic literature. I personally don't always look at the impact factor itself, but it is a good way of gauging how big and important a journal might be in the overall academic landscape. Another reason to publish in JAPA is that JAPA has a lot of social capital. It has a brand that people recognize. Most PAs have heard of JAPA and most people respect it. It's a recognizable and trusted name, which means that your work, when published in JAPA, will get some of that same recognition and respect. Journals that have a lot of social capital also tend to get cited a lot more, tend to get read a lot more, tend to get picked up by media outlets, so you're more likely to have a broad reach in a journal with a recognizable brand. And finally, JAPA publishes a wide range of article types. That means no matter what you're working on, you're likely to find a home for your work within the pages of JAPA. Journals with a broad, diverse array of article types are excellent places to look because you're likely to generate new ideas and find a place to publish a variety of different types of articles you might be working on. It's great to experiment as an author and also gives you a lot of different chances at finding your name in print as a published author. Okay, so hopefully I've convinced you that you wanna publish your work in JAPA, but how do you go about the submission process, giving yourself a high likelihood of acceptance and publication? I'll break that down through six simple practical steps. The first step is to find and narrow your topic. Now this is really the first step of any article creation for any outlet, but it's important to touch on here. Topics in academic medical journals should be both important and novel. Novel means that it's new, it's original, it hasn't been done a thousand times before. That might seem like a tough task given how many articles exist out there in the world, but it's easier than you think. In fact, you can find any novel topic by simply taking your topic and narrowing and refocusing it. That means creating a subtopic of a topic or coming at a topic from a different angle. 
I have a great guide at harrisonreadwriting.com that can take you through this entire process step by step. It's called The First Five Steps to Publication for Healthcare Professionals. It's at harrisonreadwriting.com and it will take you step by step through the process of finding and focusing and refining a topic based on your attributes. So go to harrisonreadwriting.com to check out that free guide. I'll put a link in the video description. The second step to submitting an article to JAPA is to first ensure that your article meets the scope and audience of JAPA. If your work meets the scope of JAPA, that means that it's deemed relevant and important in the eyes of JAPA and its editors. That means you're basically bullseyeing the right content for that journal. If your article is right for JAPA's audience, that means it's written for the ideal reader of JAPA. Every journal has a specific type of person that they hope to have reading their articles, and so you really need to target that specific person when you're writing the article. Now I've written an entire article and created a whole video on how to determine a journal's scope and audience and how to match your work to those criteria. So I'll put a link to both of those in the video description. Step three is a very important step to avoid an automatic rejection. For step three, you need to go to japa.com, that's Japa's website, and search for your specific topic in their search bar. That's gonna pull up any articles that are related to that topic so that you can see if your article has already been published in JAPA. Remember, what you're submitting to JAPA needs to be novel. That means it needs to be original and new. So if JAPA has recently published a similar article on your topic, it's probably unlikely that they're going to accept another article on the same topic. It's gonna be an automatic rejection regardless of how good your work is. If you find an article that matches your topic but is a different article type, you may still have a chance of publishing, but you're gonna to want to tread very carefully to ensure that you're not duplicating or creating redundant content. One thing you can do is to try to take a completely different angle at an article, or you can look to update an old article with new information. If you find an outdated article on your topic, you may need to switch gears and create something like a clinical update article instead of a complete review article. And if you're really stuck, it's okay to shoot an email to the journal editors and see if your topic and your article type would still be a welcome addition to JAPA. Searching for your article on JAPA.com is not a foolproof way to ensure that your topic will be selected, but it will save you a lot of headaches and a lot of heartaches and avoid that automatic rejection. Step four, you need to review the JAPA departments and article types and read the author guidelines to determine what type of articles JAPA accepts and what they expect of each of those article types. This means you're gonna to have to go back to japa.com and explore the different departments and see which different types of articles JAPA accepts. This step is great because it may get some of your creativity flowing. It may give you new ideas for article types that you didn't know existed. Once you've found an article that matches what you want to create, you're gonna to want to read the guidelines for that article type. Every journal has different expectations, even within the same article type. So make sure you're reading the JAPA guidelines to see what JAPA editors expect of each of these article types. You really wanna match your work to the expectations of the journal so that you don't have to do needless revisions after the fact. The author guidelines give you things like word count, format, and structure, and also some helpful tips that'll help you writing the article itself. It's good to check the author guidelines before you start writing so that you don't waste time in the writing process or have to go back and change things after the fact. There's nothing more frustrating for an editor than to have to give repeated feedback that they know is in the author guidelines, so save everyone the frustration and the time and read the author guidelines before you get started. All right, step five, you're finally writing the article. Now every single article type is gonna have a different writing process and I can't possibly give you all of the writing advice in this video that would pertain to everything you might be working on. So go to harrisonreadwriting.com and look for writing advice on specific article types and general writing advice that I have on the website. At the end of the day, the best thing is to sit down and give yourself plenty of uninterrupted writing time so that you can get the words on the page. 
then you can always go back and edit, clean things up, and make the writing stronger. There's nothing more intimidating than that blank page, so just go ahead and get started on something so that you can get the wheels turning. I personally find that the more complex a topic is, the more I need to outline so that I can keep my thoughts organized, but you can outline as little or as much as you really want to. It's your style of writing, and frankly, a different process works for every writer. Once you've written your first draft, make sure you get some help to proofread and edit the article. You don't want to submit a manuscript that's full of errors or that says things that you don't intend at all, so a second set of eyes can be really helpful in polishing that manuscript. Step six, you're going to want to prepare and submit your manuscript. Now, this step can be a little bit tedious, but it's worth the upfront effort so that you don't get automatically rejected or have to go back and do an extra revision of your manuscript. To make sure that you're meeting all of the proper submission guidelines, you're going to once again refer to JAPA's author guidelines, but you also need to create an account on something called Editorial Manager. Editorial Manager is a separate system that JAPA and its editors use to manage manuscripts. So it's important that you create an account on Editorial Manager and get a little bit familiar with how to operate that system. It's going to pay off, especially if you're looking to submit more than one manuscript to JAPA throughout your career. The Editorial Manager website can be found through JAPA.com and you'll need to create your own login and password to use it. Once you've created an account with Editorial Manager, you'll use that system to communicate with JAPA editors and submit revisions of your manuscript. Make sure you properly format your manuscript and submit all of the required documents before you hit that final submit button. There's nothing more frustrating than having a manuscript returned to you over some tiny practical detail that's out of place. So take a lot of care in this step. The last thing you want to do is stumble at the finish line. All right, so there you have it. Six practical steps to publishing an article in JAPA. Now there's obviously a lot of other elements that go into researching and writing an article. So go to harrisonreadwriting.com for more writing help and subscribe to this channel for more useful videos in the writing process. If you go to harrisonreadwriting.com, be sure to download that guide, The First Five Steps to Publication for Healthcare Professionals. It'll get you on my mailing list so I can keep sending you helpful advice on writing and publication and more insights in the publication process. If you found this video useful, hit the like and subscribe button and share it with a friend. We want to help everyone through the writing and publication process. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.